Good morning, everyone. Oh, I hit myself in the boobs. Good start. Um, can you believe that this is October? What on earth? This is so strange. Yesterday we had um, Ali's family over and um, it was like a huge, there's like 13 of us. We were hosting, we did um, brisket on the barbecue and we just can't believe this weather. It is absolutely wild. Like the, the sun is literally like beating down, but it's funny because you know how the light is different between the seasons, there's a lot of like, um, I think in summer there's more like warm lumens. I'm probably completely making that up. And then in um, in autumn, winter, there's a lot cooler lumens. I, I've probably completely made that up, but it's generally that's how it works. There's something that's cooler in the, in the light in winter and uh, warmer in the summer. And so you've got that really bizarre like differentiation between the light and it's so beautiful I actually I can't cope it's so wonderful and then like there's hundreds of birds in the sky above me at the moment and you can hear the birds like it's October this is so strange it feels like spring it's gorgeous but yes it is Sunday after spending the day with the family it was all of Ali's side of the family um, with his nan, we're just all ch trying to sort of rally around his nan at the moment. So it was lovely to have 13 people here. There was kids, dogs, babies, everything. Um, and it wasn't a late night either. So I think we were in bed by sort of half 10, which was really good for us. Ali is playing golf um, this morning and he should be back this afternoon. And I have an event today in London, which I'm going to and I'm getting ready for today. This is a very, very special event. It's one of those events that I think that out of all of the sort of um, big types of events that you get in in England, this for me is one of the most, well, if anything, I'd say this is the most special of them all because this is the Pride of Britain Awards. And I'm sure if you're in, in England, you know about this already, but if you're not, the Pride of Britain Awards is just the most inspiring, incredible and, just thought-provoking but also generally like it really is quite heartbreaking as well and it celebrates everyday people that have done extraordinary things in their lives and against the odds defied the odds um, broken boundaries saved lives raised enormous amounts of money for charity all of those kinds of things. I think the one that really, really stuck out to me in this particular year's list of winners is um, Lee Rigby's son, because I think all of us in the UK especially will remember where, where they were when they heard the news about Lee Rigby. And to see his son, who was two at the time, now raising thousands, tens of thousands of pounds um, for, for in his dad's name, basically. Um, is just the most incredible, incredible thing. And so today we're going to London and we're, we're gonna be celebrating those people, which I think is hugely, it's just, it's incredible, it really is. So today is not really about my outfit, but um, it's really sort of menial, but I thought I'd get ready with you for it anyway and show you what I'm wearing and show you, showing you what I do and, and bits and bobs, and then hopefully show you a bit of the behind the scenes of what what happens because it's televised I think it goes out on the Thursday but um, it's filmed obviously on the Sunday and a lot a lot happens behind the scenes that never makes uh, TV and there's really quite like special heartwarming moments that you don't realize are um, really like I, sometimes I wish I could share them with you. So I'll try and be on the ball. You know what I'm like, I get um, I get quite sort of overwhelmed. I, I imagine knowing myself, I'll probably get incredibly emotional as well, but I thought it'd be nice to sort of take you with me on this journey because it's a first for me. I've never been invited. Um, I'm going on my own as well. And Ali is usually like my security blanket. He's so incredible. Like, honestly, he's so incredible in these um, types of scenarios. He's so calm, just like a swan. And um, so I'm trying to channel a little, a little bit more of Ali's energy, but on my own today. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting ready. I'm currently in my pajamas and it's um, 11 o'clock or probably nearly 12 o'clock now. And I get picked up at three. 
and I just want to give myself a bit of time, just do a few little nice treatments on myself and get myself ready to um, to go. And yeah, I've, I've dug out a dress. It was one of the dresses I was going to wear um, previously, but now's it's time to shine with it being like more autumnal and that kind of thing. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I've been having my coffee out here and I've been starting a book that I um, bought when I was at Jaffa and Neil and um, I saw it as I was walking out and it's the it just the the window display really captivated me it's called the farmer's wife my life in days and it's by Helen Rebanks now the lady who owns Jaffa and Neil was explaining to me that she is the wife of a very well-known farmer now I don't know anything about this I, I was more intrigued by understanding what it's like to be a farmer's wife but really apparently she's the brains behind a lot of the concepts and and um things that he discussed so i think what i'm going to do to be honest is actually do a bit of research to begin with and then delve into the book just so i've got an understanding but it seemed really really interesting so i bought that when i was leaving and um yeah i've been sat out here in the sunshine in october with my coffee i don't think this is going to last very long but course it's just me but I'm enjoying it whilst it's here and um, thoroughly getting as much sunlight on, on my skin as humanly possible to um, stand me in good stead for the season ahead <laughs> so I'm gonna clean up the doggies and I'm gonna get myself first and foremost in the shower give myself a good sort of scrub down and um, just one of those sort of like cleansing showers where I'm going to do a bit of cold, bit of hot, bit of scrubbing and um, I'm going to look like new basically. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> I was just about to start filming in here when I realised I could hear a puppy dog crying from outside. I went outside and he, he usually tells us when he wants something. I'm like, what's wrong Porter? I look under the, the sofa and he's managed to find a tiny piece of cheese that is left over from last night. And I grabbed the little piece of cheese and he's like, oh, thank you, mummy. But I'm gonna jump in the shower first and foremost. At the moment, you'll know that my beauty routine centers around trying my best to like just make my own skin look its loveliest. And my skin is perfectly good skin, but I'm, I'm weaning myself off of fake tan and you'll, I, I spoke about it in a previous video. And I'm just looking to do like good things for my skin, so. I'm going to start off with a good head to toe exfoliation defluff with my razor. In the shower itself, I've got my little freebie that I got from Shantakai when I went to um, H Beauty not long ago. It's been a really, really good cleanser. And um, I've got that one pump left in here. I've just replaced it with another one. I would have bought the same one, but I love trying new things. So um, this one has served me so well. When did I go? It must have been like four months ago and this little freebie just lasted so well. I'm also on the end of my body wash. This is the Soleil Divine from Cordelie and this smells like summer and it's kind of appropriate that I've just finished it now. I love seasonal fragrances in the shower as much as I like seasonal fragrances everywhere else. So I'm going to swap that out. I think I've got a cow shed one, which is their invigorating body, body gel. And I think that's a really good one for like autumn, winter to give you that kick up the bum in the mornings. So basically, I'm not washing my hair because I'm going to put my hair up. It's going to be a bit of a like body scrub down. Kind of, it's kind of going to be like if your body went through a car wash. You know, like the old school car washes with the, the whirring Ujimi flips. It's going to be like that. Proper scrub down, bit of hot, bit of cold, bit of rejuvenation and then on to the, the moisturising and things and bits and pieces like that. So that's where we're starting. My dressing gown is on inside out, but that's because I spilled coffee on it. So let's get in the shower. Okay, out of the shower, by the way, these are the towels that I told you about from Stacey Solomon's collection. I wanted the all green ones, but I actually think these are probably better for my bathroom because they kind of blend the marble tiles with the green and tie them together. So actually, I kind of lucked out. The only thing is, is I wanted to buy a load of them for face cloths as well, like reusable face cloths. But um, I ordered them and they were sold out. Literally everything was just like gone so quickly. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd tell you about those because I, I know I mentioned them in a previous video. I am now popping on my skincare 
So I'm going to do a few drops of the pie. Uh, is this their rose hip oil? Yeah, rose hip oil. Just because I love the kind of texture of this and I feel like super nourishing for like my skin. And because I'm going to be wearing eyeshadow tonight, I feel like I've spoken about it a lot, but I often have allergic reactions to um, eyeshadow. And so I'm kind of trying to cover all bases. So I'm gonna pop some Lano on my eyelids. Just ooh, as a precursor, I don't think that's the right word, um, for my eyes. And then, once that's all gone in, I'm gonna use my Elizabeth Arden Advanced Ceramide on my face. Later down the line, I'm going to use it on my chest. That is the sound of Ali getting home from golf. That's very early. It's me. Maybe it was a good game. Interesting. Anyway. <laughs> He's ruined it. <laughs> the dogs are going wild because daddy's home. Okay, oh, I just almost flashed. <laughs> that was Ali getting home. And if there's one thing I've learned about um, being the wife of somebody who loves golf is um, you have to sort of gauge before they walk through the door what their mood is like after golf. Um, let me find a stand for you because otherwise I am going to end up flashing everything that I've got and that's not a lot but um, yeah so he I'll just take a little seat here I think <laughs> um, yeah so he I was sort of peering out the window and looking at him and I could instantly tell from his face it had not been a good golf day um, I can't be the only wife that kind of has to gauge what mood they're going to be in when they um, come back. Because I think that's the thing that I've realized with golf is that it's not a game that you're just always good at unless you're like Tiger Woods or whoever. Um, if it's more of like a hobby experience for you, often it's a bit touch and go. <laughs> and he sometimes comes back and he's like elated. Today was not that day. Um, I think not so much in the golf that he played, but more so in um, just the scenario. Like I think there was a tournament going on and it meant that they couldn't play what they wanted to play. And then that threw him off a little bit. And then he's a bit achy from being in the gym and that kind of thing. So anyway, he wasn't in the best of moods, but when I acknowledged, I was like, was it not a good golf game? I could see in his face the fact that I'd seen that in him, like almost, took the sting out of it a little bit. <laughs> and so anyway, he's outside now, um, getting the barbecue fired up because I'm gonna have a burger before we go. And um, that's gonna be my lunch, my pre, uh, my pre Pride of Britain lunch is a burger, which I'm not mad about. When the weather's like this, it is that sort of perfect excuse to just fire up the barbecue and um, have some good stodgy food. And I think it always calms my, my, my nerves when I've got a full belly. So anyway, I'm gonna get my body creams on and bits and pieces now, um, just so I can get myself marinating and then I'm gonna put on one of my Arvel toweling dresses. It's hot today, so it's the perfect option and um, I'll be comfortable. I am still using my Lily of the Valley dusting powder uh, that I showed you in my previous video. I am gonna be looking into ones that don't necessarily have talc in them, but I want it to smell as lovely as this because this one has such a lovely fragrance and I do really enjoy using it. Um, but obviously health comes first. So I want to um, see if I, I think the Neil's Yard one was what people were saying is a really good one. So I'm going to look into that because I love Neil's Yard products. Um, so yes, that's what I've just dusted on. And I think I've left my deodorant, my Mitchum downstairs. Here's a shot that you don't need. This is a shot of my pants for this evening. These are my sort of most, most comfortable and um, invisible pants, but because the dress is a bit poofy that I'm wearing, I am also going to pop on some very, very comfortable little boy shorts. These Intimiss Me boy shorts are really, really comfortable. Um, and because the dress is black, these won't be seen and I'll just feel a little bit more supported. Um, in my nether regions. <laughs> 
these are the three dresses that I pulled out. Three are from my Karen Millen collections, previous ones, and um, then one is Mila. Now, I haven't actually worn this one yet. I have worn all of the others, so I think I might actually go with the Mila one, um, although I do love the autumnal feel of this one. Um, but I've had this for about three years now, this dress, and I feel like it really deserves um, its outing. And... I think it's nice and simple, really kind of pared back. I'm adding my black Manolo Blahnik shoes, which I've had for a good few years. These are a bit of a classic and I, I tend to wear them quite a lot. And then I was thinking about going with my LK Bennett pearl necklace and maybe some just pared back pearl earrings um, for the look. But I'm going to try a few things on anyway. But I won't need to wear a bra with this because this has like a corset and it's very like structured. Um, so that's why I'm not wearing a bra with it because, yeah. Fragrance of the evening that I would like to wear. It's really weird. I'm being drawn to air in Ambrette de Noir, but um, it's just too early and it's too hot. So I think what I might do is go for English Pear and Sweet Pea from Jo Malone and I might try and put it in an atomizer because I am, I do find myself reaching for this on special occasions. It's just really nice and delicate and to have it in an atomizer would be really lovely. So maybe I'll go for that one. Hmm. Do I want something a bit different? Oh, I don't know. As I said, I'm going for the same body products that I used for the NTAs, which was this patisserie body oil. I'd have the tiniest amount left and the girls told me that they've discontinued this and it's made me so sad. I'm gonna have to try and find um, another one of their fragrances because this is their Lemon Balm and Daisy and I love it so much. So I'm gonna pop that on. The body cream that I have been using recently is this one only because my fresh one that is part of this collection, the Morning Rose one, has ran out. I've ordered a new one, but um, in the interim, I'm using the Heirloom, or Heirloom, Sandalwood and Grapefruit Hand and Body Lotion, which is made in England, and I love that. And I love their hair oil. I've been using their hair oil on my uh, hair for today's look, so you'll see me using that as well. But um, this is actually really good for hand and body lotion because I have found, I know I mentioned it, I found a lot of hand and body lotions tend to dry really quickly and they're not as moisturizing long term. This is like an enigma because it, it dries, but it's still moisturizing. I don't know how they've done it, but it's really lovely. And um, But I'm not going to use that today. That is just the one that I've been using recently. And instead, um, I'm going to go with this one if it will last. We'll have to see. Otherwise, I do have another another small one, but it's not this fragrance. I just really love this fragrance. Hmm. Righty-ho. I'm just going to pop my hair up on my head like so. Ooh, that didn't really work, did it? <laughs> there we go. It's one of these death clips that will rip out your hair. I don't know why I'm using it. I'm going to give my skin the once over with my Kenzie. If my code is still valid, I will pop it in the description box down below. As I said um, in my previous video about this, I always feel like it gives my skin a really healthy glow. So I didn't do this. Did I do this last time? I think I did, but I'm gonna give myself a quick once over, pop my attachment on like so, and fire her up just quickly. It'll take me two seconds, and I just always love how it looks on my skin, so. Let's do this. Okay, first pass done, instantly, like, um, I also need to pluck my eyebrows quickly as well, so I'm gonna get this done and then eyebrow plucking, just a little tidy up. Right, <laughs> that was like a whew, time for eyebrows. So I've got my little, uh, what's it called? My little tweezerman, uh, spoolie brush. I will need a pair of, Scissors, et voila, tweezerman, and I'll need some tweezers, which are always the thing that I just cannot find. There we go. Right, and let's do this. Let's tackle the fluff. To be fair, they're actually not that bad because I've been keeping on top of them, but just those little stragglers 
give them a once over. And this will actually stand me in good stead because I've got um, my Waterstones event this week as well, so. Ooh, tell me ramble. <laughs> brush. Do we need a trim? I did trim them recently. No, we don't need a trim, I don't think. And then, just going to use my little face razor. Although, again, I feel like I've kept on top of this because I've seen the difference it makes. Just got to hope that you don't actually get any of your brow that you want. That is the, uh, that's the, the test because I just want to separate my brows from my hairline. These things that you just don't think about that actually make a huge difference. Actually, this brow needed it. I honestly don't understand like how these work. They're so clever. Like, how are they safe? They're probably not. <laughs> Very fluffy. And the thing with my brows is that there'll be just like one hair that I just cannot see. See, look, you've missed a bit, Lydia. What are you doing? I said that they didn't need a trim, but if I look from the side, they let me stand off my face. Tell me. <laughs> it's a good job I'm having a burger. Now to brighten up my eyes a little bit my little secret weapon, which I don't use often anymore. I have dry eyes in general, but um, I've swapped over to some more gentle ones to just moisturize my eyes in the morning. So only when I want my eyes to really kind of be a little bit more awake, um, will I use these now, or if I've had like a bad night's sleep, which I didn't last night. I actually didn't have a bad night's sleep last night. So all is good. Okie dokie. Let those set in. I like I need to raise you up. I never get this right, do I? I never get it right. Right, now that that's marinated, going in with my usual, the By Terry Brightening CC Serum. Ali is um, doing kitchen bits and bobs. <laughs> one sticking out from like what? <laughs> okay foundation I'm using is the Dior Prestige uh, Le Micro Fluide Tante de Rose and I mix this with this because this I always have confidence in this foundation it always stays put but it's got so much like grippiness and, and confidence mixed into it that I can actually add a little bit more just to water it down because it is it is quite thick coverage I put it on with my fingers first. I don't know why, I feel like this gives a good base as like natural as possible and then you can kind of add bits and pieces where you need more coverage. It works well for me. I give it a little sort of buff over um, with my foundation brush just so that it all blends and then I'll use a pump of it to give more coverage anywhere that I need it, basically. around now <laughs> because I can't see what I'm doing on one side of my face. So there we go, that's a bit better. Banana low lighter to add brightness. One of those eyebrows that I've cut off my, <laughs> my brows has found its way to my top lip. You cannot stay there, Mr. Brow. Ben? Yeah? You better. You're filming. Mm -hmm. I'm my mouthful. Okay, you finish your mouthful. <laughs> Do you want cheese? Yes, please. Tomato sauce? Yes, please. 
One or two? One. Okay. <laughs> You're so excessive. <laughs> I'm having two. You're having two? Two burgers. I think one is good for me. You've got two biceps to feed. Two biceps to feed, yep. <laughs> I need to sneeze, but it's not coming. <laughs> Come on. Blush, I am, oh by the way, that was my beauty pie bronzer. Blush, I'm using the same Chantecaille one because I feel like it gives a bit of life to my complexion. Just a little bit of pink. I'm sniffing, sorry, because I really need to sneeze. <laughs> and it is just not coming. The sniffing is, it's annoying me now. <laughs> it's annoying me. Okay, so for eyes, I'm going to go in with the Vive, what palette is this? The Essentials palette, because it has a really lovely color called So Shy, and I used it on my eyes, and I really, really liked it. You know when you're sort of realizing that you probably need to clean some makeup brushes when you're running out? <laughs> I think that is where I'm at. I'm gonna go and wash this one. <laughs> My nose is literally running. I'm guessing because it's warm outside, there's probably a bit of hay fever. Who knows? Right, let's do this. So this is the palette, which I love, and it's got So Shy is this one here. It's like a really subtle. It looks like it doesn't do much, but I promise you it does. It kind of gives you like your eyelids, but better. <laughs> See that, it's just a really delicate color. Thinking some subtle. <sighs> bit of subtle warmth. If we go with cozy, let's try a bit of cozy. Maybe two orange. <laughs> Wasn't really the vibe I was going for, but we, we move. Let's get a bit of it on here. Usually kind of when I do this and I just work and play, it sort of comes together, which is sort of an accurate depiction of my entire life, but oh well. Okay, so we've got a corally look which was not what we were going for, but we're going to play around with it and see what we can do. Let's get some of this lava rock in there to just take it from summer to autumn, maybe. That feels a bit more autumn-y, doesn't it? But I love this little Victoria Beckham um, nude eyeliner. It is like my ultimate makeup bag hack because if I've got a spot, I just use it on the spot. If I want to like carve out my eyeliner, it, uh, my eyeshadow, it just does it beautifully every time. And then you just kind of blend it in, you know? But I'm not sure about this. It feels quite harsh and I was wanted it to be a bit softer than that. Maybe a bit more lava. It feels quite orangey still. How do we feel about that? I feel like maybe it needs a bit more subtlety. It's going with a bit more so shy. The makeup artists will be having kittens watching me do this. That feels a bit better. Right, lava rock, do your thing. Hi, I didn't realize my camera had gone off. <laughs> um, okay. I've just put this on and I'm really happy with how the eyes are looking. They just look a little bit warm, um, but they don't look too much, um, which I'm going for kind of more of a paired back look, even though this is way more than I would ever normally wear. A little bit of the under eye with my Swede eyeliner, which just kind of gives it a little, a little warmth. 
Right, let's go in with the, the mascara. Now I'm on a really weird hair cycle of my mascaras, of my mascaras and my eyelashes. So I've lost loads of my like longer eyelashes and <laughs> I'm like, and so my eyelashes are not their best, but it's really not a big deal. And you've got Tweezerman eyelash curlers and a good old Swede mascara. You make the best of a bad situation. Which is relative only to um, mascara. <laughs> wow, it's kind of made it a bit more intense on the eyes with the mascara. <laughs> This is what I mean, like my face, it just shows makeup. Like I was going for a really subtle look and I feel like I haven't done loads, but oh well, let's get some eyeliner in there to maybe open up the eyes a little bit. Where is my lip liner? Oh no. Oh, there it is. Literally, I lost this. This is my lip liner for the thing that I'm working on and um, I lost it and they, they said they couldn't get me another one and I've only got this amount left until to last me until it launches and it's been delayed and I'm like, no. What time are we on? Give them a neck. What? Can't film that. Can't film what? This. Why? It looks horrible. Oh, it looks lovely, babe. It smells incredible. Mm. Smoked you smoked it out? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've just done my lips. Oh, no. Be worth it. Okay. I feel like I've done it too, like, intense. Maybe I go for something not so corally on the lips. Maybe just go for lip balm. Let's try that again. I think that's better. It's a bit more subtle, isn't it? more blush I think my face has eaten my blush and then a little bit of the MAC hush highlight oh no oh, the splodge of highlight no don't do that to me now I have to try and get the bits that I've got on my eyes off oh blooming neck I need some food. It's very well throughout. Mm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> food has been eaten now we kind of have to look at the hair so I'm thinking my low bun just to keep everything in place and off my face and it means I don't have to worry about anything so I'm going to use my heirloom um, oil first of all I'm going to put that on first just to help with just to help with getting my hair to stay in place for the look and then we will hairspray after. Now for my head, I tend to get a little bit of height at the crown just to oh, tight. Should really be using a silk scrunchie, but. So what I'll do is all of these little flyaways I will secure down at the end. The most important thing at the moment is just... I like the ponytail. But what I'm going to need is my little hairpin box that I bought. Do you know what? I might actually secure this now. I have a toothbrush, but I don't know where it is. You just create a little bun. Hmm. Right, 
definitely think it's the bun. I think the bun is the look. That bun has not gone how I wanted it to. So that will take a little bit more. Hmm. Okay, I have done my hair. Makeup feels autumnal, but not like too much, I don't think. I didn't film my hair with you, I'm so sorry. But you know when you're like, I'm not sure about this, and you sort of need to, um, what's it called? You need to like focus. <laughs> not that my hair is of any importance whatsoever and nobody will ever care. It's just, it's very easy for it to go wrong, but these little grips, I'll link, I'll link them down below. They are from Amazon and they're so good for just holding flyaway bits in place. Although they can be a bit savage sometimes. Like just popping them in to help. And I always use my mirror here, like so, to check the back of it. So there's a little bit hanging down there. So I'll pop a little bit of hairspray. But for the most part, we've got a good bun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna film my outfit, get ready with me now. Um, for like Instagram or TikTok or something and then I'll show you my outfit once I'm dressed and um, show you what perfume I'm going for etc etc. Right, outfit is finished. This is the point where I leave my camera at home and I take my uh, phone with me because I can't take both unfortunately. Um, this is actually an underskirt to a dress. There is actually a top that goes over the top but I felt like it was a bit too sparkly. Just going pure black. I've got my LK Bennett necklace on, um, Astrid and Miu earrings, Manolo Blahnik shoes and the fragrance I went for was English Pear and Sweet Pea from Jo Malone. So, um, yes, I've just double checked my outfit, but uh, I'm going to see what Miss Malone Gordon thinks, brush my teeth, and time to go. Look at that 
subtle mist over the fields. My goodness me, looks like there's a blanket over there. Look at that. Wowzers. Good morning, everyone. There is a subtle mist that is just creeping over the fields. This was all clear a second ago, and it is slowly but surely engulfing the field. It is absolutely incredible. We're at that stage in the year where the farmer is working the earth of the fields. So those paths are dug up and so we kind of have to play it by ear, unfortunately, but it isn't for long. And um, they don't, from what I, I know, they don't really seem to get too sort of angry as long as you try and stick to the path. Mr. Millen Gordon is filming his pride and joys, the boys. We've got a little aircraft up ahead. I have some oil on my hair. I've got oil and three more inches from uh, Michael Van Clark. So I've got a little braid at the back of my hair. I've got a coffee and I was so bleary eyed this morning. Hoti Baki! Hoti Baki! Come on! Oh my goodness me! <laughs> Fast sausage! Hello boys! Hello! You look very smart. Going after their daddy. It is actually Tuesday of publication week, which um, I took Monday off from having a video just because there's so much that needs to be done. <laughs> um, I've got an event. I then had the Pride of Britain as well. So the awards for that then I have another event this week so it has been um, it, and is going to be a very very busy week but luckily we're still getting to enjoy and get out in nature Mr Millen Gordon there it is a blooming beautiful morning my goodness me can't quite believe it I should have my outfit arriving for my Waterstones event and um should be arriving today which I've had made um, it is a bespoke Susanna London outfit um, it's a different color of something I already own so I'm gonna get that open with you and show you that but also I've started to get a few sort of like people reading the book and sending me their thoughts and it's just so so wonderful and uh, no, it's really good seeing some of you guys, like, your thoughts. Someone said this morning that it's the best book they've ever read, which, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm very, very flattered. <laughs> but no, it's exciting seeing you all get your copies. And obviously it's a few days before actual uh, formal release date, but yeah, very exciting. These boys are eating the sheep's poo. Our favourite little stream is currently not moving. They definitely have um, dams and channels that they close up for different sort of seasons around here. And we're heading into this field down at the end of this little track, um, where at the moment we have turnips growing. And turnips is a big one that grows around here. I probably made that sound like they grow wild. They don't grow wild, they are planted by the farmer. And what happens is, is they let them grow. They let them get very, very like big and bulbous and that kind of thing. And then they release the sheep into the field. Slowly, they phase them across the field and the sheep eat the turnips. Their droppings then fertilize the land. It gets churned up in their, with their feet and their hooves and it makes really, really fertile soil ready for planting the summer crops, I believe. So it's a strange one. When we first moved here, we were sort of like, turnips, how bizarre. But no, we then realized that this is all part of them fertilizing the land um, and getting ready for more crops. Ooh. And there you have it, said turnip, little bubble turnip. Um, some of them grow quite funny, but yeah, these, um, are planted, sheepies eat them, and this field will be ready for crops. Look at these morning views. Gosh, isn't that wonderful, Bordeline? It's daddy up ahead. It's now a few days later after um, heading to the Pride of Britain Awards, and I wanted to debrief with you slightly and just 
tell you what an incredible experience it was, what an incredible honor it was to be invited to that awards ceremony. Um, I was not prepared for how moved and inspired and just grounded I was going to be by that experience. The strength and tenacity and bravery and incredible things that so many of the people were doing that were awarded on the night was something I, I don't think I'll ever be able to put into words. And if you are ever fortunate enough to attend the, the event, oh my goodness me, first of all, take tissues. And second of all, just, just really like allow yourself to feel the enormity of what so many of those people have been through and experienced. Um, as mentioned, the listening to, to Lee Rigby's son um, communicate how much he had raised and everything that he's done since his dad's death is, was just so moving. Um, and it was just one of those evenings where you learn so much as well. Like I learned so much about the, the postmaster's investigation and, and scandal. And I had no idea how many people were impacted by that and the kind of lives that were ruined and how it took one man to really take the reins and just change that trajectory for so many people. It was unbelievable and it was incredibly inspiring during a week where the the news feels quite heavy at the moment and i imagine that there are lots of people watching this that where they feel quite overwhelmed with what is going on in the news and i just want you to know that my heart goes out to all of you and anyone who is affected by what's going on in the news at the moment today is my um event with waterstones at st james's church um, this is an event where I am absolutely bricking it, but I'm taking inspiration from all of those that stood up and accepted their award um, at the Pride of Britain Award because they're just normal people. And they stood up in front of a room full of celebrities and, you know, huge business people and CEOs and they stood up and they held their own and some of them even stole the show and so I'm taking inspiration from their bravery because I think that they possess a bravery that so many of us would not would n never have to engage so I'm trying not to be nervous about it and I actually feel calm now I've I've prepared I've practiced and that is the best that I can do in this so I am getting ready for this evening like I said it's supposed to be 250 people mum and dad are going this is a first um, the whole team is going, um, everyone that I like work with on a regular basis are going, Ali is coming, it takes a lot to get Ali to come to one of my events, he's like look I don't get out of bed for less than, but no he's coming this evening as well and um, I have my outfit um, which I'm going to show you, I'm getting ready, there's a lot of events this week so I've obviously just done Pride of Britain and tonight I have another event. If you're wanting to know anything about my thoughts and tips and favorite brands to go to for events dressing, there is a blog post over on my blog at the moment and I will pop that in the description box down below. Um, I thought I would show you what I'm gonna be wearing because it's a personal favorite. So um, what I wanted to do was wear something that I felt really comfortable in, but still really lovely in as well. And you'll know that I bought, um, I bought this piece roughly around this time last year, maybe a bit more into winter. And it was my, it still is one of my most favorite items I have ever bought. It's from Susanna London. And I asked her if she would be able to put together an evergreen version of this two piece. And Susanna delivered, okay, it arrived yesterday. And um, I'm so excited to try it. Well, I've tried it on to make sure that it fits, of course. The weather has now turned. So I am having to, uh, make sure that I'm going to be warm, but comfortable, but presentable. So that is what we're going with. However, first and foremost, I'm going to film a little get ready with me for my um, reels and TikTok. And then I will show you my outfit as well. Uh, I'll link the reels and TikTok and whatever if it goes live. I haven't put anything live yet because I've just been so focused on making sure that I'm prepared for this evening. So yes, if you're looking to buy Evergreen as well, if you haven't bought it yet, I'll link it in the description box. If you are in America or if you're in anywhere in the world and you're on Amazon and you're buying it and you're, it's saying that you're not going to have it delivered until March, I think the 4th. If you go to the Amazon UK link and you buy through there, 
you should still be able to purchase it. So otherwise there's um, Waterstones which ships worldwide and you won't have to wait until it is released um, overseas. So just my top tip there. Anyway, I need to crack on. Okie cokey. My evergreen outfit is complete. Um, this was custom made for me by Susanna London and it is just the dream fits me so so nicely and I feel really really comfortable in it as well but also like warm but not too warm I haven't had to put too many like well I haven't had to put any layers underneath I've got a bra underneath the shirt and this is the good thing that I love about this outfit is that as the season gets colder it's the perfect winter outfit to dress up but look lovely and still be warm um, it's in this beautiful evergreen shade and the um, headband was an impulse edition I find that I'm definitely more of a headband girl in autumn winter. This is from Clementine and Mint and it just so happens to match perfectly to this outfit. I've got Manolo Blahnik shoes on. I was going to wear my shoe clips but I want to be dressy but smart dressy not sparkly dressy. Not yet. It might be a bit too festive so um, I've gone for it this way. My shirt is Suster and Hicks. Um, I've got a bag, obviously my bag's not going on, on stage or anything like that, it will just be me and my little cards ready to go. I was going to wear my Anushka earrings, but I decided to just keep it simple with the pearl again. I don't want to get too, too carried away because I'm dressing up again tomorrow. But I'm ready to go, I've got an hour to go, so the good thing is, is that I'll just be ready to jump in my taxi and head to London. I am, however, going to put some comfy non nap pants on underneath my skirt, just for comfort, I think. Ali will be over the moon. The way it goes on is like that, so they loop behind your ears like so. Okay. And the best thing to do is if you drop that then back over your jacket and then you can put it into a pocket. Okay, so I'll take like my that. jacket off. Yep. So wait, how do I do this? When you, you lift your right hair right. up, don't you? Oh, I have to lift my yeah, hair up. Yeah, it's going to go under up. your hair basically. Okay. okay. We will not be defeated by the mic. This is a legit. Are we going? No, it's not. This is perfect. This is my dream. We're living a dream really. <laughs> yes. So then that goes down. Yep. So just make the, the ear loops fit comfortably. So squeeze them in. And that looks upside so down. Sorry, it is upside down, yeah. <laughs> I always get this wrong with these microphones. I think it's quite high. <laughs> That's so funny. Abort! Abort! Every time, Every time I go in with such confidence, I'm not going to but no. Oh dear. Britney Grace, not Britney. Oh, okay, no. okay. It's okay, it's just that bit there. We okay, go. so it's the, right, the other way. Other way so yeah. you didn't actually tell me to put it on that way, I put it on that way, and it was you... me. I got it wrong. Did you? Yeah, I'm I just sure. went for no, it. No, no, lift, lift. I'll let go. <laughs> 84 years later. <laughs> it's been 84 years for me. There we go. Okay. How are we looking, Brittany? I mean, that's definitely not the nostril. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want it sort of in line with the mouth place. And then just, if you speak, it will sort of normal speak to the bottom. Yeah, baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh my God. This is my
Okay, we are mic'd up. I'm really hoping that they're not gonna turn the sound on upstairs with the mic down here because then they're gonna hear me wittering away with my mic. Fee is getting ready because Fee is going to be interviewing me this evening, which is very, very exciting. If you don't know, Fee has actually kind of interviewed me. I've been on a panel where Fee has done the sort of um, interviewing before. She's very well versed in this. And so it was a joy for me to be able to have her do this with me, even though she is part of my team as well. Um, I've just met my close protection security and that's something that always makes me feel a little bit more comfortable and I feel really lucky because today I have a woman and her name is Christina so that for me is just always like it's a bit calming um, but yes so we're gonna just sort of run through and get on with things down here and then head upstairs for the event. Where's the one that says smile? I'm sorry, you're about to be on stage. You absolutely are going in it. It's like a proper power. Like it is. And now fluff it out. She got the nerve. <laughs> I'm glad I talked my bum crack. <laughs> <laughs> right, team. Let's do this. Nervous wiggle. Yeah, we have done a nervous wiggle. Done a nervous we wiggle. Shook it off, Ellen. Oh. Yeah, what is, what, why is that the Look at Ellen, she's like... <laughs> 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 so get the, like, the nervous wiggles out, get the nervous energy out. Okay, okay, okay girls. Okay. No, you're going first. Ready? Ready to go. I'll follow you guys. Okay, now I feel like an old side. Because the other is about to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
warm reassurances and comforting life lessons. Um, like I said, lows and highs, but I think that what, is, what really underpins everything that is in every group is this acknowledgement of how joy is found in the simplest of places. And that is really, <laughs> you know, gone over things in my mind and really wanted to simplify that. And I think that the more that you get to get, um, what's the word, acquainted with Evergreen, you will understand that there's this sort of running underpinning of what and where and how to curate joy through the seasons in this way. And I think that I'm just, I'm very excited for, for that. But I think that what I want to do is ensure that in this world that we live in at the moment, which I think you can all agree the news this week has been particularly heavy, there's 24 hour news cycles, there's social media feeds, there's the insight into people's lives. And I hope that Evergreen becomes that grounding piece of, of work that you are able to revisit when the world feels a little bit heavier, but also when you're feeling really lazy too, when you're having those highs. I want it to be that, that piece of content that high fives you and, and lets you know that you're doing a good job. And I'm always such a long-winded explainer of these things, but I hope that that's just my passion coming across with this project. <laughs> It's like you can't box this woman. Like she does everything you do is so damn well, and I think that that's yeah, that to me is. It's I think that it's those things where you don't expect to find joy that so many people forget about, and so many people they do the mundane things like baking something and making a jar of chutney or just getting outside, and those are the things that I really wanted to put the emphasis on because they become normal parts of everyday life but actually when, you, when you're conscious and you're paying attention to what you're doing it can bring this overwhelming sense of, of joy and, and fulfillment the, the truth is is that i went on my own journey with everything because the evergreen that you will get to know today is a very very different book to what the first piece of writing was i i went on a journey of letting go of a lot of things that have happened and a lot of things I probably held in me. So much of what it is that makes me this quiet, confident and happy person that I am today in the hope that if ever you find yourself in a situation like I might found myself, that you'll have something that offers up those moments of joy that maybe you don't know where they are and you're struggling to find them, but also those high fives that maybe you don't feel you're getting in life. I do want to really sort of make this point that I wrote this book for you and for me, but for you because I care about my audience so much because some of you have been with me for such a long time and you are the most passionate and wonderful people and I feel so lucky, so lucky that you would turn out for me like this um, and so lucky that you support me in, in the way that you do and so I just hope that everyone is the high five that I can't give you in those moments when you need it, but also like the, the arm around your shoulder when you probably need it most. Please, I know you've probably heard this story so much, but I was sent the packet of seeds, but it was me that planted the seeds. I could have left them on my side, but it was me that planted the seeds. And then two days later, when those seeds sprouted, and I felt that like, euphoria, because if anyone has been here a while, you'll know that there was only dead or fake plants in my house, <laughs> like pre-COVID. And, um, and so this was my first experience of that. And I have never felt anything like that in my life. Has anyone else grown anything here where they just like, oh my God, you're little sprudlings. Like they're just coming through these little things, but it, it's so exciting. My relationship completely changed because I was looking for those things to create the joy that already existed, but I just couldn't see it. Uranium and Saga. What I did was I lent them into the fact that I actually got to be a bit cozy at a time when I didn't expect that. And because I changed my expectations when we finally reached the point where we're sort of moving into autumn, I didn't feel like I did that summer. And that was me like testing myself to change my happiness equation that was happening when we were talking about Evergreen and the launch date and, and when it would be, it would be arriving. We really thought about this being as a gift that people would receive at Christmas ready to tackle a year 
in a different way and to change how they've approached the seasons previously. And so there is that option too, I can say, if you want to wait, you can wait, I'm not even, but you know, <laughs> I don't want to know what you're but I do think that, that would be quite a special experience to do it that way as well. Amazing. Um, I think that brings us to an end season. <laughs> I just also want to say thank you because I've always noticed about myself. It's one of the things I'm like, you've got to do this job in here. Everyone's waiting for you to do this, and I forget to thank the people that have literally been like everything to me in this process. So, first of all, I want to say thank you to you. I'm not prepared for that introduction at all. And I'm sat there, and she'll see my face and open down the door. I'm like, oh my god. So thank you. Thank you for that as well. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for being on this journey with me as well. Obviously, thank you to my publishers, Orion Spring, yes, Ellen, Ellen, thank you so much. Thank you to Bell PR as well for all the girls. I feel like I just, honestly, you are like the, the, the gift that I didn't know I needed. So thank you so much for being today. Thank you to my best friend, Carrie, who is also my manager and has been through absolutely everything with me. Thank you to my husband, Ali, for, I mean, you have no idea what that man puts up with. It's ridiculous and he deserves a medal because he is just the most kind person in the world. Um, my mum and dad are here as well. My mum, I don't know where my dad is. Dad? Hello, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken. I was like, oh, my legs were literally dripping in sweat. Yeah. Good job you touched your bum. I did. <laughs> Molly, and then the girls came over. Yeah. Look at all them. And said that they'd survive for them. They said, lovely. Seatbelts, kiddos. Gosh. I mean, I don't know how we're going to get all of this from the from the train on onto the train yeah wow i'm like adrenaline at like well it's i'm about it adrenaline at like 75 percent at the moment Hi. yeah my oh my god i thought i was gonna faint i honestly thought did i was you? gonna walk out there and faint but with that for me it was like a real but did you feel better later like, yeah i once down? i got into it and like the fact that i had you know the cards that i could use as prompts and, and that's a nice idea yeah i honestly i felt so much better for that and yeah, it's just, and Fee's just so good. Like, she's yeah. so good at, like, prompting parts of the book without, like, you know, without feeling like she's, like, leading me somewhere. She's just, she was great, and I'm so glad. That, and that introduction, I, I was nearly in tears. <laughs> I was, I've actually got a video of Lydia poking her head around yeah, the yeah. corner whilst Fee's doing it. I, I just, you know, she's just, like, the best cheerle cheerleader ever, and she always just knows how to articulate things so well. And yeah. just... I'm just very overwhelmed. You smashed it. I, no, but when you walked out and you gave the things, it sounded like someone went, ah. Yeah, I thought and I, I had was a like, kid. Was, yeah, I thought it was a child. Someone said Carrie. And no, if I'd known that they were shouting Carrie, I didn't, I didn't even realize. And do you know what? I hadn't even realized it was you. My mind was going 100 miles a second. I hadn't, Carrie? Yeah, Carrie? I hadn't even realized it was you that oh, walked no, out. Like <laughs> it's so strange. Look at those eyes. Those are the eyes of someone who was so nervous about their event that they have exhausted themselves. But it was so worth it because once I got out there and the nerves subsided, I had the best time ever. I am now home and I've stopped. 
um, but I had the quite possibly the most magical evening of my life. I didn't really talk to you too much because my nerves were right up here, um, but it was just incredible. And now I'm like getting to relive it and hear how much you guys enjoyed it and took from it. It was so it was such a moment for me because I had my whole team there and like not just like my immediate team, I had my um, publicists team as well and like when I tell you that these girls are just the best girls ever I feel like I'm part of the best girl gang ever when whenever they're here and then I had the publishers Orion Spring there I had my mum and dad obviously Ali was there as well and then so many of you and it was just and then some of you waited outside the back entrance <laughs> And then um, I ended up on the train with one of you as well, which was just such a lovely treat. We got to travel home with, um, I think it's Karina. And we had a lovely, lovely little trip back with Carrie's mum and dad and Fee and her boyfriend. And yeah, and I have a wonderful array of gifts, which my mind is blown, but thank you. And some from my team as well. I got these beautiful, very Lydia Linen esque flowers from Belle PR with thistles and roses and hydrangeas and uh, wax, I think they're wax flowers. Then in this particular packet here, these are the originals of the artworks from Diane Sutherland. If you don't know who Diane Sutherland is, she is the artist that we worked on um, for the illustrations in Evergreen. And I, I, I had a bit of a moment where we were all on a zoom call and we were talking about the originals and I just kind of blurted out I was like oh my god can I have those without thinking I mean like she's literally an artist and so I never really brought it up again and I thought maybe they've forgotten or something like that and then today they brought them and I'm like oh my gosh I'm not gonna open them just yet maybe I'll open them with you um another time and then just lovely little thing. this one because it was raining when we walked out and um, this is a lovely gift of um it says to Lydia and Carrie, something from us besties to you besties from Honor and Michaela. Uh, it got a bit wet, I'm sorry, because it was raining, but this is tea and biscuits. Um, oh, Victoria Grey. <gasps> I've never tried that. I love an Earl Grey, but we're going to try Victoria Grey. And we've got shortbread in there. Um, there's little bits and pieces. There's so many cards, but oh my gosh, it's cake. Hey, cakey. Oh, stop it. <gasps> green cake, green and pink cake. Wow. This looks incredible. Do you know what? I think I'm going to save this hey cakey um, stuff for Friday because we have um, a team pyjama evening at my house where we're going to have food and drinks and things like that, just chilled in our pyjamas. Um, and I think cake will probably go down very well. I'm going to open all of these cards and things like that. Um, when I'm by myself because this has probably been one of the most overwhelming evenings of my entire life in fact I think it was other than our, um, other than our wedding day which was true like um, this was up there and um, I'm just feeling very tired I think I need to eat something and come down from it all but I'm just even just reading more of your favorite parts of the book and how much you enjoyed this evening. I just, I can't put it into words. I can't, I can't deal. This is everything. And I just can't wait for this, for, for tomorrow now because it's launch day and I've got another event tomorrow, but it's not evergreen related. I've got an event with Garrod tomorrow at the Tower of London. And um, it's to celebrate their wings collection and um, just spend a lovely evening with them basically. So I'm looking forward to that too. But yeah, <sighs> I'm on cloud nine.